Okay, let's talk about the small signal model of a MOSFET. So this is going to be much faster and much, much quicker discussion than what we had with small signal and BJT because you all know what is a small signal model and what does it mean. So just to remind you, with BJT we have this like basically curve that was basically VBE and the y-axis was IC and we said that there's an exponential kind of a relationship and uh, we said that well depending on biasing I'm going to be either working at this point or this point or this point or this point and depending on where I'm actually working at I'm going to have a different slope of this trace right and the higher the slope the higher GM I'm going to get out of my device the more quality I can get out of my device of course it came at a cost like higher current and then like the risk of going to saturation etc etc but then we define GM as the instantaneous slope of this curve so we define GM as the derivative partial derivative of IC over VBE I'm going to do the exact same thing here I'm going to have the exact same definition I'm going to look at the MOSFET, as I said, we're going to only use MOSFET in the saturation region when we are talking about amplifier circuits, simply because that's the good re region of operation where things are basically my MOSFET is actually um, is a voltage controlled current source. So my voltage current relationship this time is if I draw VGS and this is ID, it's a quadratic relationship. So it's not exponential, but it well, it has similar kind of form, right? It's exponential versus quadratic. There's def they're definitely different, but then, well, they look a little bit similar. Now, I'm going to define GM as the instantaneous slope of this curve again, right? By the way, if you are wondering why this curve is very different than what we've drawn before, the, the plots that we have drawn before in the previous slides was basically ID versus VDS, the drain source voltage, right? This is the gate source voltage and you can see that for a gate source voltage while well, these are constant this is constant so the only parameter that's changing is vgs and you can see that id is basically this tells you that id is proportionate to vgs squared okay and that's what i'm trying to plot here now because i'm defining gm as the instantaneous the slope of id versus vgs it's going to be like this so if i apply this partial derivative to this expression by the way this is because i have only one parameter here this partial derivative becomes just a normal derivative so if you don't know what's a partial derivative just think about it as normal derivative okay so if i take the derivative of id with respect to vgs here i'm going to get this expression okay so my gm is going to be mu and c ox so this two comes here and cancel out with this one over two so i get one of mu and c ox w over l vgs minus vth okay and i can i can see that there are similarities between this expression and that expression i can see that if i multiply id by two and then divide it by this vgs minus vth i can get gm so i can define gm as equal to two id divided by vgs minus vth you can use either of these expressions um, as you we will talk about like basically uh, which one of these expressions are better to be used uh, when we are actually talking about designing amplifiers using MOSFETs in chapter 7. And you will see that sometimes this GM is actually more useful and sometimes that GM is more useful depending on if the current is constant or the, or the, uh, the dimensions of your transistor is constant, like the size of your transistor, the W and L are constant or other things, right? So depending on what is given and what is constant, we're going to use either of these and then there's another version of that. So we're going to talk more about the different equations for uh, to be used for GM of a MOSFET um, in Chapter 7. And you will see that, well, they're all basically equivalent to each other mathematically. But then sometimes uh, one of them is better to be used than the other one simply because of what is given in the question. So let's continue building our small signal model. So again, if my ID is equal to this, um, if I want to find the R0, uh, the output resistance of the transistor i know that the definition is actually uh, again derivative of id versus vds and then because well ohm's law i have to do the ohm's law tells me that the resistance is voltage over current then i have to do the inverse of this right so before doing that because this expression up here is not a function of vds i have to remember that i only have r naught if i have channel length modulation so this has to be completed by one plus lambda vds right so only exists 
if we have channel length modulation similar to our nod in bjt's it only existed if we had early effect if we if va was not infinity okay now if i do the derivative of this again this expression if i do the derivative of this expression with respect to vds and then inverse that i'm going to get something like this and you can you can see that uh, part of the der derivative, the, like all of the derivative except the lambda, is basically the expression that they have for current. So 1 over 2 mu and cox w over l vgs minus vth squared. Of course, it doesn't have this little part, so it's a little bit of cheating, but it's a really good approximation to call this entire thing here just id. And then, therefore, my r naught is going to be 1 over lambda id. Just for comparison, in BGT, We had R naught equal to V A over I C. Okay, so now the difference is that well in BJT the only thing that was actually setting my R naught was actually the the bias current of my transistor and the early voltage which was given to me wasn't it was really outside of my control. But here, as I mentioned before, this is really because lambda lambda is proportionate to one over L. This is really means that like this one over lambda id is really proportionate to L over id. So not only I can control this with uh, changing the uh, current, I can actually control with changing the L because the, the higher L, the smaller lambda, the, the smaller lambda, it means that the larger R naught I'm gonna have, okay? Now that I have the R naught and I had the GM, I can actually build my transistor, the small signal model of my transistor. One thing that is very weird here, is that there's no R pi here, the thing that we had with BJT. And the reason is that, well, with MOSFETs, if you have paid attention since we started talking, the gate cannot have at DC. I don't, I don't, uh, we don't care for now about the AC analysis, but at DC, I cannot really have any current. So the current of the MOSFET at the gate, so IG, is always equal to zero simply because it's connected to a capacitor, right? So at the gate, we see a capacitor, and we know that capacitors have like zero DC current flowing through them, right? Capacitors only have this current uh, when there is some sort of an AC change, when there's a change in the circuit because, well, the current was CDV over DT, right? So as long as there's no voltage variations, as long as there's no DV over DT, there's no current in the capacitor. Therefore, you can see, you can say that the MOSFET at the gate has no current. So this means that, well, there's an open circuit between gate and the source. Does this mean that I don't care about the voltage across it? Absolutely not. You see that, like, basically, my uh, the current that I have on the other side is basically GM, like, between drain and source, and the small signal model is actually GM times VGS. So we do care about this um, because it actually sets my, basically, the current from drain to source in my small signal model. So we do care about it, but then there's no resistance here. It might be a little bit weird to have some just to, to just write some voltage between two open terminals but then well you will get used to it you don't have to have a resistor to actually define a voltage difference between two nodes um, these are two nodes and they have a voltage difference and we're going to define that voltage difference as VGS